community or a well-known community, you're going to have influences and things that will kind of filter through. Uh, even experimentations or ideas where everyone's like, hmm, what about that? Or would this work and this and that? The thing is, we've used the Course in Miracles, so it's basically a mind training program of, of releasing all judgments and all grievances and letting the darkness come totally up so you don't have an unconscious and a conscious mind. You have a fully conscious mind. That's the goal for all of us, is to not have a, a subconscious that's running, the programming, the, the conditioning, you know, the assumptions that are down there. As long as you have an unconscious mind, there's going to be all kinds of things that play out on the surface. Because the body is almost like a robot or a puppet. It just acts out what the mind believes. And if you spot it, you got it. And if you believe it, you perceive it. And, and you may not even be aware of what you believe. You may not even know, but it'll get acted out in, your, in front of you, in your face. So you, that's how we find out about our unconscious mind. Is what, what is going on on the screen, on the surface. So in terms of sexuality and relationships, again, remember the guidance was you know, no vows, so we don't take vows of poverty or chastity and obedience, we don't take vows, uh, we just have these no people pleasing, no private thoughts. So, over the years, um, we have had some, some marriages uh, in the community. Um, a marriage, uh, legal marriages. Um, also, this idea that a marriage is like a, a temporary commitment. You know, you're committing really to a higher purpose, to have your mind healed, you know, to come to live in harmony with everyone and everything. So it's a very high goal, but if, if there's a guidance for people to get married or be in, we'll say, even a committed relationship, there's a sense that there's going to be a pretty intense mirroring that's going on. Mirroring goes on all the time anyway, but if you have a partner, you know how that is, it's kind of multiplied. It's just kind of in your face because you're living in such close proximity. So we've had those. Um, we might say, we, we rely on guidance for everything, so entering into those kind of relationships or coming out of those kind of relationships is a matter of guidance. It's really tuning in. It, and it doesn't presume that there's any like, things right or wrong or stigmas. You know, we don't feel that there's anything better with coming together than there is breaking up. Uh, we have to trust that there's a bigger plan and that relationships are always maximal. Each one is learning the most that they can, and we have to be very honoring of those decisions. Um, in terms of what you were mentioning too about multiple sexual partners and, and experimentations around sexuality, uh, I've always felt from Jesus that, that uh, the way he put it is that to accept the atonement, to wake up from the dream of this world of separation requires you accept the atonement. It's simply a word for correction. There's a, there's a correction that we have inside of us. And that's our purpose in life, is to find that correction and embrace that correction. Not the error. You know, it's like we're not responsible for the error, we're not responsible for the sin. We're responsible for accepting the correction for the error. And sin, in, you know, in Aramaic, is missing the mark. So basically we're here to hit the mark, which is accept the correction. But that's what Jesus calls a total commitment. And he says that the ego doesn't even know what commitment means. So we're very wary of kind of living a life where there's no commitments and no agreements. We know that there has to be practical steps to take you back to this highest goal of, of accepting the atonement. So we're very honoring of these commitments, even if they're temporary. And I've always thought that kind of like multiple partners and multiple relationships is very ego gratifying. They're basically just for pleasure and novelty and you know, that's, there's a motive underneath. Uh, I call it Dixie Cup relationships. Does anybody remember, remember Dixie Cups? There were the little, the little paper cups, like little funnels, and there's a whole bunch of them in the stack. And you just take one out and you just fill it up and you take a little sip and then you throw it away. And then you get another one out, you get a sip and you throw it away. That's how the ego likes to have relationships. <laughs> Just keep getting the sips and throw, throw the cup in the trash. <laughs> Communication? No. Just keep getting the sips and throw it away. You know, there's no 
it's really a kind of a, an aimless life when you just go for gratification, ego gratification. And it's very short term and, and it's never satisfying. So, so we, we are quite honoring of these commitments and also even when the commitments come to a, an end, we're very honoring about that too. But I wouldn't say uh, in terms of sexuality, for example, that, that we are into polyamor or some of the things they talk about. Where I just see those sort of as experimentations, but there's really not a deep commitment and not deep communication oftentimes. They're very surfacy when it's just for sexual gratification and you really aren't talking about the deeper things, it's not really the most helpful. Um, we don't really have, we don't have anything where we say, you can't, you can't, you can't, but in terms of our guidance, we just share what we really feel is helpful. Because we want to wake up, we want to come to a place of non-judgment, and we don't want to delay and waste time. So we're, you know, those are things that we've done, but I thought I would just touch on that briefly because sometimes people say, well, what, what is your community and how do relationships work? Again, it's really based on guidance. Mm -hmm.